Are you running your Raspberry Pi OS from an SD card and are you looking to improve the performance and the reliability of your system? Stick around because in this video I will show you how to configure and boot a Raspberry Pi 5 from this Samsung NVMe drive in just a few simple to follow steps. I do not want to pretend like I'm a Linux guru and I'm gonna mess around with PCI Express drivers to get the best performance out of this SSD. No, I'm gonna stick to the basics and just show you how to get through a few simple steps to get your system up and running more or less in a plug and play fashion. The hardware that I'm gonna be using is a Raspberry Pi 5 together with the original Raspberry Pi cooling kit and an original 27 watts power supply. I'm also going to be using the Geekworm P580 metal case and the Geekworm X1002 PCIe shield which they sent in for free for the purpose of this review. And while I can recommend getting these particular products because it was very easy for me to get it up and running, you are by no means restricted to using this particular hardware so these instructions should still apply if you're using a different PCIe shield and case. But your mileage may vary. These ones just make the whole experience nicer because they're designed to work together nicely. So the Raspberry Pi 5 was the first Pi to officially expose a PCI Express interface externally and even though it's not as fully featured as the ones found in desktop computers because it's just one PCI Express 2.0 lane uh, which is exposed externally, it's still a very decent performance boost. I'm not going to go into the details of measuring the performance because uh, Jeff Geerling, which is better skilled at these things, had already done a, a great blog post comparing the Pi 5 to the Pi 4 and comparing SD card versus uh, NVMe drives. I will just link that in the description below for you to check it out. The PCI Express interface on the Pi 5 is hooked up to this uh, flat flex connector, so how do we get from this to an M.2 connector that is commonly found on the SSD drives? Well, for that we need the shield and while the Raspberry Pi official shield is not yet available, there are plenty of uh, others that are available like this X1002 from Geekworm. This little guy will take a uh, very small and thin flag flex connection from the Pi 5 and adapt it to this M.2 form factor while also providing the necessary voltage rails for the SSD. And as we can see here, it does support multiple form factors, uh, 2230, 2242, 2260, and 2280. And I believe that uh, the particular Samsung SSD that I have here, it's a 980 series, which should be the full length 2280. And while you can use other SSD drives, there is a caveat. At least currently, there are issues with supporting SSD drives based on certain Fison controllers. This has nothing to do with the actual PCIe shield, but instead is related to the drivers on the Pi 5 that cannot correctly init a Fison controller. And there are a bunch of threads on this topic available online, and there has been progress recently with some patches released that fix some of these issues and bring compatibility with some drives like Western Digital Blue Series SSD. But if you want to go for a more plug and play solution that you know is going to be working, just pick one of these uh, Samsung SSDs or any of the others that are reported working. And yes, I know because I've had the same issue. All of the drives that are on offer or cheaper in general are based on the problematic Fison controllers. So you have to spend a little extra for a Samsung drive or similar. So here I am installing the SSD onto the shield. I'm gonna secure it with the provided screw and then I have to connect the flat flex connector and this is marked on both ends. So make sure you get this into the correct orientation. You need to lift the latch on the flat flex connector on the PCB, insert the flat flex cable with the contacts facing down and then close the latch. Then make sure you align the shield in the correct position because it uses a couple of pogo pins to draw power from the 5 volt rail present on the Raspberry Pi GPIO header. Then the black screws included in the set go on the Raspberry Pi side. Well, the tiny uh, standoffs go on the shield side. Now all that's left to do is to connect the flat flex on the Pi 5 side. It's actually much easier if you do it in reverse order. First connect the Pi 5 side like so. Latch this one in place and do this one which is horizontal and much easier to do. 
Then optionally, uh, I will also be using a compatible metal enclosure from Geekworm. This is model number P580 and as we can see here the build quality is very good and the construction method is bent sheet metal with matte black finish paint. Now with this enclosure you also get a set of these uh, tiny passive heat sinks but like I said I'm using the official Raspberry Pi cooler because once you start running any kind of CPU intensive tasks you do need active cooling on the Pi 5. But the case is designed for that and has plenty of vents to allow for uh, airflow. And now the hardware is pretty much ready for config and there are multiple ways to do this whole setup. There is the option of using a USB to NVMe adapter and writing PyOS from a different computer on the SSD. Or we can also flash PyOS directly from the Pi 5 running on an SD card in the beginning. And since I don't have one of those adapters, it doesn't really make sense to purchase one just for this simple task. So I'm just going to use an SD card which is already flashed with PyOS and I'm going to first boot my Pi 5 from the SD card. The first thing we need to do after booting up the Pi OS is to make sure we have the latest version of software on our Raspberry Pi. So we open a terminal and we type this command which will install the latest updates for our system. Now if your Pi OS image was installed many months ago this will take a while as it has multiple updates to install. After the update is complete, we need to check if we are running the latest bootloader version, which may have an impact on the NVMe drive support and compatibility, so don't skip this step. I'm going to run this EEPROM update command, which is telling me that I am not running the latest bootloader version and I need to run uh, the Raspberry Pi config command. I need to go to advanced and select the uh, latest bootloader version uh, and, and then I will uh, save this and this will take care of applying the necessary update to the bootloader. We can now reboot the Raspberry Pi for completing this step. Next, for our second step, we can write the Raspberry Pi image on the SSD drive by using the Pi Imager software, which is built in, uh, just like you would do with an SD card, but instead selecting the NVMe drive as destination. And in a couple of minutes, this step should complete. The third step is to tell our Raspberry Pi that we now want it to boot from the PCIe NVMe drive instead of the SD card, because by default the PCIe interface will be disabled. To do that, we once again make use of the Raspberry Pi config command. We go to advanced options, boot order, and we select the NVMe drive, hit enter, wait for it to uh, apply the changes, then hit escape to finish it off. At this point, I opted to shut down the Pi just to be able to cleanly remove the SD card from the system. I'm going to power up again and we are now running off the NVMe drive on PCIe Gen 2.0 speeds. Optionally at this point, if you'd like to increase the speed of the interface, it is possible to switch to PCIe Gen 3.0 speeds. But this is an experimental feature and your mileage may vary. To do this, you have to edit a text file located in uh, slash boot slash firmware slash config.txt. So use your favorite text editor to edit this file. Uh, I use nano and you just have to add this one line at the end of the file. Pretty self-explanatory. You just have to save the file now with control plus X to confirm the changes and reboot. Now at this point, my system is booted up and it should be running PCIe Gen 3 speeds and if you care about these things you can run a popular benchmark uh, from Pi benchmarks for example. My results were 781 megabytes per second read, 517 megabytes per second write speed and a total score of 49,980. How does this compare with the community results? Well, we can check that over on pybenchmarks.com. We do a search for Samsung 980, 250 gigabytes, and we notice that the score I got is way higher than any of the others published for this specific SSD, and very close to the maximum score obtained generally for the Samsung 980 series. So I'm quite happy with the results I got, and now it's time for the uh, Raspberry Pi to go inside the enclosure um, because it's so fast now that it might just fly off the workbench if it's not secured properly. Something to be aware of this whole setup is that the uh, PCIe header on the Pi 5 can only supply up to 5 watts of power. So if your SSD requires more, 
that's probably an issue that you'll have to address by supplying 5 volts externally to your drive. Now the actual Samsung 250 gigabytes SSD that I'm using quotes an average power figure of 3.7 watts. They don't give out a max power figure, but I think we should be good with that. And by the way, I will put a link in the description to the specs of the particular uh, NVMe drive that I have used here. So as a final comment, I must say that getting this uh, Raspberry Pi 5 running on an SSD drive is a lot easier today than it was a few years back with the previous versions. If you get the right hardware and apply just a few um, settings presented in this video, you should be up and running in no time. And I'm quite happy with the results and build quality of the hardware from Geekworm. So I can recommend them for such projects. You'll find links to their products in the description below, so do check them out. I would love to hear from you in the comments below whether you have ever tried running a Raspberry Pi from an SSD drive. What was your experience like? It was anything like I described here? Uh, was it better or worse? Let me know in the comments below. That was all for today. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content ahead. Thank you for joining me and I'll catch you in the next video.